Hi, in this video we are going to generate a gear, an 80 tooth M1 or metric size 1 gear to match a pinion gear that we uh, produced in another video. So I will begin under basic shapes. This time I'll go straight to my favorites where I have the metric gear already um, starred in my favorites. I'm going to start by adjusting the height down to five millimeters. I will stick with the module one. It's important, it's critical that the module match uh, the gear that you want to mesh with. You're basically, the module, module sets the size of these involutes. So um, if you want two gears to mesh, they need to have the same module. I also would not change the pitch angle. What we are going to change, though, is the number of teeth. So I believe I'm looking for a gear ratio of 8 to 1, and our pinion was a 10-tooth gear. So if I make this gear 80 teeth, type in 80 for the number of teeth, uh, we are going to, this will line up with our pinion to produce uh, an 8 to 1 gear ratio. Now, as in the last video, I'm going to use a ruler to center uh, some holes and cylinders and do a little bit of modification to this basic gear. So um, I can click ruler or my shortcut key is R. I'll just place that on the work plane. I'm going for a top view and a parallel uh, projection. Now with the gear selected and my, right now it looks like my ruler is set to endpoint, so I'm going to scroll here. This is under the gear, but it says use midpoint. When I select that, now I'm looking at distances from the center of my ruler to the midpoint. So if I change that to zero and change this to zero, notice the 81.96, that is the total diameter um, of the gear. So that's all calculated for you when you set the number of teeth in the module. Uh, I'll change this to zero as well. So as before, now my gear is very well centered over that ruler. And I can go back to my basic shapes and do some things to, um, to add a hole for a shaft, etc. I'm going to do something a little different with this gear uh, for the hole for the shaft is actually going to be a square. And if you're wondering why, um, the very center of my shaft, I want to put in some kind of shape that can't twist on a round axis. So I'm using an eighth inch steel rod and I found just through some calculation and conversion um, that if I print that to be, well, let me show you where this comes from. Um, what, I, what I had done was some test printing where I built this little test plate to test uh, press fit for uh, bearings and for that eighth inch steel rod. So I, I printed this plate and what I found was uh, that the center cylinder was the exactly the right size to fit inside the inner race of my bearing. And this, I found that this um, square was a little tight. So, uh, so I'm coming back. It's a little bit of trial and error with 3D printing and getting that dim dimensional accuracy. So uh, I originally printed this square at 3.67 millimeters. If you're wondering where I, I got that starting point by converting the eighth of an inch rod that I want to use to millimeters, and then I added a half millimeter knowing that things were going to print too tight. So I actually want to make this a little bit larger. Um, I think I'm going to go with 3.8 because I was able to uh, press the, the rod into that square, but barely. I want, I want to make this a little uh, looser in this design. So I'm going to make this 3.8. millimeters by 3.8 millimeters square 
the height is not uh, terribly critical. Now, because I'm using the ruler, and uh, hopefully we are still going to the midpoint. I'm just getting a good top view so I can double check that. It looks like it might be back to using endpoints. I'm going to click here to change that. Now it's definitely going to the endpoint. Okay, so now my dimensions are back to the midpoint. I can set this at zero and set this distance to zero. And I should have a square that's exactly aligned with the center of my pinion. I'm going to go ahead and group these objects now with Control G as the keyboard shortcut. Okay. So I, as you can see, I have produced my gear with that square hole in the center. Uh, I'm also going to add a cylinder as a solid cylinder. I'm probably going to want to ungroup this, thinking of it now, with Control shift g or this Ungroup button here, because I'm going to want to have this hole in my cylinder as well. Okay, going back to my test plate. Uh, it was the center cylinder that was, was appropriate. I test, I printed two separate plates, and then I narrowed things down even further with this, um, with the second print, making uh, this cylinder nine and a half millimeters in diameter, and this cylinder, which was the perfect fit, was 9.75 millimeters in diameter. So I know that I want this cylinder to be 9.75 millimeters by 9.75 millimeters. Okay, and I know that I want that midpoint to be zeroed. I can use the alignment feature to center these things up, but I find the ruler is just a good way of getting these perfect also. Okay. So, I believe that now, I just have to think about how tall I want this uh, center cylinder to be. The idea is that this is going to fit inside of a of a 10 millimeter inner diameter bearing and for right now I'm just going to drop the uh, the overall height from uh, 20 to maybe uh, I'm going to go 15 millimeters mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to go 10 millimeters because I believe it's it's not dropped right now onto the work plane. It was instead, it was sitting on top of the gear. So now that I've dropped it all, all the way down to the work plane, I'm going to change that to 15 millimeters in height. Uh, looks like my square hole is large enough to, is tall enough, I should say, to go through both items. Okay, might want to drop that also. D for drop. We'll drop that onto the work plane. Now I'm just going to control A, select every item, uh, control G to group it. And I have, I'll turn off my ruler, produced a gear um, with a square hole in the center and a cylinder to fit inside the race of a 10 millimeter bearing.